the truth about the coin drill. Now I'm here at uh, Formby Hall in the studio with Mike and today we're going to do a video to demonstrate what is the correct way to use the coin drill. Now I've seen this drill done numerous times on social media and I, I see it done very very differently. So today we're going to use, uh, we're going to measure using Sam Putt Lab what's the right way to go about using this drill. It's really important, it's going to affect one of the most important skills that you need as a golfer. Okay, so what is the coin drill? Now, the coin drill basically involves you placing a coin, and I've got a pound coin here, so something very similar in, in terms of its weight and size, but placing it in the cavity of your putter. The goal is either to keep it on, or at some point, it to fall off. Now, obviously different distances, you apply different forces. So a longer putt, you're gonna apply more force. On a shorter putt, it's a smaller force applied. So we're gonna do this on a 13 foot putt, but also a five foot putt to see how it plays out. So I'm gonna give the coin to Mike. Good catch. Easy catch. First bit of cash Phil's ever given me that. Right, so first three putts, Mike, yeah. I want you to feel that the coin comes off. So. In your backstroke, you're going to try and sort of throw the coin off okay. effectively. Good. So you can see that the coin is generally come off on the floor, roughly at the end of where your backstroke was. Yeah. So same again, just try and let that coin come off in transition. Good. Good. So how easy does that feel to do that, by the way? That feels normal, I that would say. That feels normal. Okay, yeah. so the coin each time has come out the cavity and it's dropped in and around where your backswing, potentially past where your backswing. Yeah. yeah. Right, so next three, we're going to try and keep the coin on. Okay. Okay, particularly in your transition. Okay. Good. One more, and then we'll get a couple of shorter ones. Okay, got those. So you can see there that the coin basically stayed on. Yeah. Yeah, we can see where the coin's dropped. It's dropped closer to the ball. Yeah. That feel easier or harder to do? Harder, I'd say. A lot more deliberately slow in the backswing, very deliberately slow at the start of the downswing, and then quick. Right, like so the ball. when we look at Sam, would you expect to see a change in yeah. the acceleration profile? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's do the same thing at five foot, because we're obviously applying forces differently. So hit me a normal five foot Okay. Pot. A little bit strong with the entry speed. Okay. So just make a normal stroke. Let's see where the coin comes off. Better. Yeah. Okay. So coins come off on all of those. Yeah. Right. So now, let me just say that. I want you to try and keep the coin on. As long, okay. As long as possible. So really Good. try and keep the coin on throughout the whole of the stroke. Okay. Is that a double hit then? Yeah. It's not far off yet. Came off in transition. Yeah. <laughs> How's that feel? Double hit. That, Almost. Yeah. Okay. Very slow and deliberate and like there's just no force in the stroke, okay. apart from it impact. So obviously on a, a shorter putt, there's less force applied. We're not trying to move the club as far in the same time. Now, I would say like you, you normally got quite brisk timing with yeah. your putting strokes. So you might apply a little bit more force on a, on a shorter putt than some others. Yeah. So a little bit quicker. So for you, the, the coin more naturally might, might come off. Yeah. Um, at the end of the stroke. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be easy for you. Change your direction. Yeah, it yeah, feels change. like once I get to the top and I'm applying force the other way, it feels like it's going to come off. It's going to come regardless off. Regardless yeah. of the putt length. Okay, well, let's have a look because, like I say, I see, I see both sides of the coin being yeah. demonstrated here. I see uh, coaches that are encouraging players to um, allow the coin to be thrown off. And I see coaches who are encouraging players to keep the coin on, particularly in transition, to help promote uh, a smooth stroke. 
And um, I mean, the great thing about technology these days, we've been able to measure, you know, thousands of golfers, thousands of golfers who have good speed control, some of the best players of the world, what do they do? So the acceleration profile, the timing, the rhythm of the player, you know, we know what good putters do. So let's see how this coin drill affects rhythm, timing, and acceleration. And in particular, I'm interested in acceleration. The drill in itself is being used to help people create what some might call ideal acceleration. Yeah, let me give you your pound back because you'll only invoice me for it. Well, uh, there should be some interest on that now. Right, so uh, let's have a look at the data and, and see what we get from it. Um, for me, this is evidence-based coaching. I, I know how you work. You know, if you're gonna suggest something to a player, what's the evidence for it? And nowadays with the likes of Sam Putt Lab, um, Capto, Quintic, you know, we can measure what's happening and then we know what we're advising the player to do. We know whether it's correct or not. Is it gonna help them achieve what you want them to achieve? So let's have a look at the coin coming off. Now, one of the great aspects of Sam Putt Lab is, is how it measures acceleration um, and the timing and rhythm. Now this graph in particular is interesting and we see a lot of common traits between good, uh, with good putters. This is acceleration graph and, and we start with you know, the club stationary, we accelerate away, the rate of acceleration would start to drop off and then we actually decelerate to the top of the backswing. Club then really um, starts to work back down, although it's momentarily sort of stationary, there's a acceleration has a directional component so you can see here that although we've decelerated to the top of the backswing that's actually acceleration away from the, or, or sorry acceleration to the target yeah so then what we see is this this plateau here so this is acceleration in the downswing we can see that it starts off at a high rate plateaus and then drops off so this line here that's the average of your uh, impact in terms of the rate of acceleration. So we can see that it's very close to zero. Yeah. Really good profile. I know, you know you're a good putter, you've got great speed control. This is the same kind of profile I would see all the time with players who've got great touch, great speed control. And a key here is that the peak acceleration, the highest sort of rate of acceleration is at the top of that, um, top of the backswing. Yeah. So that, this was when you were trying to throw the coin off or allowing the coin to, to yeah. come off. Timing wise, six, four, three milliseconds going back, three, two, two going down. That's just under one second from setup to top of the back, uh, setup to impact, which is about average PJ Tour timing. So, you know, good timing. I know sometimes you can be a little brisker than that, but good timing, good acceleration profile with the coin coming off. Yeah. That felt natural to you, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, totally natural, yeah. Yeah. It was a lot more of an effort to try and keep the coin on in transition in what I had to do in the backswing and how I slowed the putter down and then how I picked up speed into the downswing. Right, so coin staying on at 13 feet, timing. Now, immediately, <clears throat> what we notice is the timing slows down. So 800 milliseconds going back, which is at sort of slower end, and then considerably slower in the uh, downswing, top of the backswing to impact, 450 milliseconds. So this ratio starts to drop under that two, two to one, two zero ratio that you have. So something has changed here. It's a lot slower. Now you'd get, as you well know, you have people that have like maybe brisker timing or slower timing, which is fine. Some people could have shorter, more compact strokes. Some people could have longer strokes. Um, but even across those ranges, you want the acceleration profile to be kind of fairly similar. So let's just ha see what happens here. Ooh. So um, what we see here is obviously it's a slower rate of acceleration going back. And then we start to, or well, that rate of acceleration starts to sort of drop off and then we start to decelerate to the top of the backswing, but we decelerate at a slower rate. Now, basically at the top of your backswing, you know, 
you can see it's a lot, lot lower than the previous profile. So you don't have a lot of impulse, a lot of energy in that club. So what happens then is you've almost got, then got to accelerate closer to impact. And at, at impact, your rate of acceleration is a lot, lot higher. Yeah. You could feel that, couldn't well, you? Well, I could feel I was applying a lot of force near the ball and the ball had less speed on it. The ball barely got to the hole. And obviously I had to be so careful around that transition to not drop the coin. So I had to be very deliberately yeah. slow. So what, to keep the coin on, it's very easy to try and sort of like take it back slower. That means less acceleration, less force applied away from the target. Then you don't need as much force to kind of slow the club down to the top of the backswing. So you're not really applying much force to the target as the club comes to the top of the backswing. Now it's going to be, obviously you'll, if you're trying to keep that coin on, you're not going to apply much force in that transition either but you've got to apply, you've got to generate speed somewhere, and that's why that coin will come off. It comes off closer to the ball. It would be virtually impossible on an average length putt to keep the coin on. Yeah. Because you, you're not applying enough force, are you? So you don't see many great putters or with great speed control with this kind of profile where the acceleration is quite high. You can see this is speed. You can see your peak speed is way after you've hit the ball. Yeah. So everything's a lot slower, slower in transition, and then peaking at impact. And obviously that's why the coin was staying on and, and, and came through the ball. The coin is making you do that. Yeah. So as a drill, it raises a question mark why you would want the student to try and keep the coin on in transition. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Right, so there is an argument as you get closer to the hole, so we go five foot coin, um, trying to allow the coin to come off. There is an argument as you get closer to the hole, there's a little bit less force applied. At what point may the coin um, naturally stay on? So your timing got a little brisker as you got um, closer. That's a common yeah. finding. Sometimes when you get further away, um, you know, we're, we're not robots. Slime, uh, timing can slow down ever so slightly. But what you see is this sort of shape in this acceleration, peak acceleration, top of the backswing, that remains and the sort of, we could see the downward shape of this curve, minimal acceleration in around impact. So if we go to the um, coin on, let's see what we get here. If we look at the timing, it gets a lot slower. Um, ratio is okay, but oh, we get that look again. Don't we? We've got a lot more acceleration at impact and there's certainly a lot not as consistent. So not as low, oh sorry, not as high, got a lower rate of acceleration, top of the backswing, and then we're trying to find that at impact. So for me, I think this is pretty conclusive. If you're going to use the coin drill, the coin has to come off. You'll get to a point where the coin will stay on, um, but if you have an issue with acceleration, you're an over accelerator at impact and the, you're going to use the coin to help try and develop that um, uh, change of direct, better change of direction, then use it on mid range puts and don't get, uh, you know, don't use it too much on your shorter puts because that might give you a slightly different feel. Yeah. So I think anything from eight to 15 foot is a great way to start to use that coin, but the coin definitely has to come off. Yeah. Agree. So, the truth about the coin drill. Well, you've got to throw it off. And if anyone's telling you to keep it on, well, to me, you're being shortchanged.